Well, we're back again here at Market Basket, Whitney Field, Lemonster, Mass. And the parking lot where you would have to fight for a space or even have to park in mall parking to get here. Not quite the issue now, is it? You can hear they're still protesting up front. I was going to ask them questions, but they're playing copyrighted music, so that's squashed. Anyway, the recent news today from BZ Radio 1030 is this whole mess, according to Market Basket, C current Market Basket CEOs and management, is all Arthur T's fault. Boo. They lied. It's their fault for kicking out RDT, who loved everybody, treated everybody nicely. But the people that are running it now only care about one thing, and that's getting more of your dollar. So let's go in, and if there's any notable changes, we'll post them. i never shown you this. This is a popular poster. And they have incorporated the giraffe as a mascot, meaning they're sticking their heads out, risking their jobs to save the store. We support RDT. There is a slight hit. The bagels and mini bagels are now gone. We're starting to get some empty spots here in the freshly packaged area. One thing has definitely changed. The entire deli is now empty. All of it. This still had stuff in it before. ATD for MB, if you could see that. That's Arthur T. Demolis for Market Basket. As I said, the first two trips, these cases were full. These were always empty. As you can see, it's quite a history, because this is the 16th store of 71. And again, their mascot is the giraffe, sticking their heads out, protesting to save their jobs. One thing that has changed there now giving you an additional 4% off your entire purchase, minus those exclusions down there, to try to get people back, because they want people to boycott. I don't quite support that, only because you're hurting the people that are working here. The best way to send a message is to clear out the shelves, so they have literally nothing coming in afterwards. Plus, RDT, if he gets the, sh if he gets the whole shebang, He's inheriting this lack of cash. So, it's a double-edged sword. I'm trying to err on the side of the employees by providing them some income. Might not look it on camera, but pudding is getting pretty low. As well as, as I... Tea's starting to disappear. I mean, they are getting shipments, and they are restocking the shelves, either that or they're just slowly putting stuff in the back room out on the shelves. In the last video, the empty stock room I have shown you, an employee told me that was actually mostly produce and frozen stuff. So maybe this one still has something in its uh, stores, for lack of better words. You know what I'm saying? Water, water everywhere, except here. Look at that. Sorry about the bobble there. Just caught the very edge of image stabilization. Empty. Almost empty here. And of course the music playing in the background is to avoid copyright issues. So, yeah. Yeah, the water is dwindling away. So apparently, what little is left in the stock room, water ain't one of them. Also, over here, empty. Almost empty. Also, speaking of nearly empty, I'm 
picking up the pace because I want to show the the deli is slowly depleting. So remember that shelf was completely closed off. Now that one, two sections closed off. Let's see what else we have. Tension pile. Uts seems to be a very popular brand because there's hardly any of it left. It looks full, but literally most of it is just one or two bags deep. That's about it. Uts is pretty good. I'll say that much. The bread department. Now it's really starting to feel like it's uh, starting to look like the Soviet Union. For those of you old enough like me that remember video of life at the Soviet Union. No bread. Almost none left. And I'll try not to get them in shot, but on the left, yeah, stop right there. Nothing. It is starting to hurt now. And let's see what else, if anything, is left. And over here, back in the produce area, they're still trying to keep it going as much as they can. Spreading things out a little bit to make it look a little more full. Collapsing things in where it's no longer needed. And again, as we see, this is pretty much what you see on the news. They only show you these aisles. Produce and deli and some of the other major ones. Frozen Foods here is doing really well. Ice cream is doing fairly well. There's a couple of small depletions and that's about it. And we still have a little bit of uh, stuff they bring out every now and then just to sort of bring people here. There were a ton of bananas over here. Easy for me to say. Now there's only three or four, six. Very few potatoes and I don't know what the green things are. But I do have something to show you. Of course, here's living proof. Well, before we get to the living proof, there's not much in the way of flowers left over. Proof that not everything is as bad as it seems. Most of your frozen foods look like this ice cream aisle. There is another difference now. Remember the bakery? Well, this was pretty much empty to begin with. Remember the bakery still had quite a few baked goods in it and all that stuff? That's it. Just that one cake. And empty signs. An empty bakery. No more food. Get some macaroons going. Free samples, but good luck getting any. Empty here. And that's been empty last time around. Nothing on these shelves anymore. Empty. Yeah, these are now completely empty. No more any of that special stuff. No more subs, no more grilled stuff. All sold out. And they're still trying to throw a few things on this shelf here and here and there, what little is left. And I believe that's all we have to show you. So let's end it out front. <laughs> all right, we're in front of the market basket and we've got a couple of people that are willing to talk about what's going on only because there is an international audience and they may not be clear as to what's going on here. 
So these people here have said they will say something about it. So, for, for those that don't exactly live around here, especially, a, especially in other countries, can you sort of touch on what this is all about? Oh. Um, our CEO and boss, Arthur T. Demoulis, he was fired by his brother, oh, I'm sorry, his cousin. And, uh, his cousin doesn't hold nearly the same philosophy that Arthur T. does for our company. Arthur T. believes in family. The customers first. It's never been about the money. His cousin, Arthur Estimulus, however, wants a. He wants all the money. He wants to shut Arthur down. Arthur T. down. He wants to get rid of Market Basket. Red for Market Basket. Yeah. So yeah, I see the shelves are starting to get a little empty there. So. So did, I don't know if you guys heard, but on BC Radio this afternoon, they have reported that all this trouble that you guys are having is all Arthur T's fault. What do you say about that? Absolutely not. He's about us. Arthur Estimulus, however, he's, he wanted to put his, you know, I, I don't really have a good answer for that one. Yeah. Like, Arthur Estimulus, all I know is he just wants, he's in it for the money. Yeah. Arthur T's been in it for the people and the low prices since the beginning. And that's what a lot of people say. All the trouble that got started just came because his, his, his cousin finally gained the muscle to shove him out and this is the result of all of that and he'll do whatever he can to take the heat off of himself so. yeah cuz that's what we're hearing on the radio now is that the board that's currently sitting says author T has caused all this trouble yeah absolutely not. and people over there that don't want to be on camera are agreeing right now mm, they would agree yeah they all tell you that Arthur T is the man Arthur S just needs to go all right so I th so I think that will pretty much sum everything up for our international audience that does not know. All right. Thanks for your thanks for in the interview. No and there they are. And that will conclude this video of Market Basket in Crisis Part Three. <laughs> George F five five one saying, "Hope you enjoyed and have a good one." And hopefully these people will have a better one pretty soon.